Veronica Dornan. She's with McMaster University's Physics and Astronomy Department. Hey, good to see you. Big smile on your face today. Lots of fun, right? Yeah, for sure. Everyone here on McMaster campus in Hamilton in general, very excited. Yeah, tell me a little bit about why this is so special from, you know, from your vantage point, because, you know, you know the science behind all this stuff. Yeah, so basically to get a total solar eclipse, several things need to align very perfectly. So in general, it's just the moon where it is in the sky lines up right where the sun is in the sky. But in actuality, things need to line up perfectly in terms of the phase of the moon. It has to line up in terms of the plane that the moon orbits around the earth and the plane that the earth orbits around the sun have to line up perfectly. And we need to make sure that all of this happens so that we can be inside the path of totality. Yeah, and the path of totality, just, you know, in layman's terms, means basically the sun is totally blocked out by the moon, correct? Yes, essentially that shadow of the moon is a very, very small area over the course of, of you know, the planet. And so it's just very lucky if you happen to be in that location where that shadow moves across North America. And, and this kind of thing is, is, you know, well, for us anyway, in this part of the world, quite rare. But as you know, there are these kind of eclipses that happen, you know, not that, it's not that uncommon. It just depends on where it happens on the planet. And a lot of those places are just unpopulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so total solar eclipses happen on average once every 18 months somewhere on Earth. But you're right, a lot of the time it's over the Pacific Ocean or Antarctica. And like I said, even when it's over something like North America, not that many places happen to actually be inside the path of totality. Yeah, so for it, any it, given one place, it can be hundreds of years until the next time you see one. Yeah, I know that there's going to be another one in North America in 2033, but that's only going to hit Alaska. And uh, the next one is in 2044, but that's uh, particularly in Western Canada. So we're still talking about 20 years from now for that part mm -hmm. of the country. Can you explain something to me about the timetable um, where, and we're going to show it if we can get that back, just the, the hour and the, you know, the location and the amount of time that each place is going to see this. Now, why is there a variation like where you are, Veronica? It's a minute, 50 seconds, but you know, you go to places like, uh, in New Brunswick or Prince Edward Island, and it actually is more than three minutes. Mm -hmm, yeah. So the reason behind that is because the shadow of the moon is a circle. And if you are, say, tracing a line from uh, the bottom to the top of a center of a circle, your line's going to be much longer than if you're tracing from the edge. So us in Hamilton, we're on the edge of that shadow, so we get less time inside the shadow. Whereas, you know, Niagara Falls, they're basically right at the center, so they get a much longer amount of time inside the shadow than other people. So that's why we see this variation, depending on how close you are to the center of the path. The other, the other thing I'm curious about is, you know, you're talking about the variations that go on. When someone is in the path of totality and the sun is blocked out, does it basically become nighttime? So not entirely. So one of the really interesting things, especially if you don't have any clouds, like the lucky people in New Brunswick, is when totality happens, actually around the horizons, you get essentially this effect of like a 360 degree sunrise, even though the sun is directly overhead. And this is because light can travel very long distances. So you're able to see the lights that are hitting the ground from areas who are only getting a partial eclipse. And so it's, it's a very kind of eerie effect. But that area around the blocked out sun gets quite dark. And there's this penumbra. Can you explain that to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the reason why some people get a partial eclipse and some people get a total eclipse is because actually there's two types of shadows. So the umbra, that's the full shadow. You get the totality. The penumbra is partial shadow. So some light from the sun is still peeking through, but some of it is being blocked. So that penumbra is much, much, much bigger than the umbra. And that's why almost all of North America will get to see some type of partial eclipse. They're inside the penumbra. Yeah, we're just, uh, as you're talking to us, we're showing our viewers different uh, live pictures coming in. I think that was perhaps Mexico a moment ago. People along the beach, uh, as they're because we know it's going to start in Mexico and then trace upward through the U.S. and then into Canada. Moving very quickly, correct? Yes. So, yeah, it's moving really quickly because not only is the Earth 
turning, but also the moon is also moving across. So that shadow is moving really, really fast. Okay, tell me about the weather because, you know, some people are a little worried this is going to be anticlimactic if they are in a certain part of the country where there's a lot of cloud cover. Yeah, so I'm an astronomer, not a meteorologist, but I've been looking paying a lot of attention to the clouds here in Hamilton it is overcast and but uh, in a lot of southern Ontario there might be some breaks in the clouds so we might get lucky but even if it is totally cloudy during totality it's still going to get really significantly dark in the middle of the day which is also something really exciting and it's also a multi-sensory experience so once the moon blocks the sun the temperature can drop as much as 15 degrees Celsius. So it's still something very exciting. What about people who are not in that part of Canada? We were showing, you know, southwestern uh, Ontario and into Quebec and into the Maritimes. But what about, you know, if you're if you're in Manitoba or you're in Alberta or B.C., what are you going to see or not? So out in other regions of Canada, you'll still get to see a partial eclipse. And depending on how close you are to the path of totality, more of the sun will be covered uh, by the moon. So uh, people in Toronto get to have 99.9% .9 coverage, not the same thing as totality. Whereas as we get further out into BC, you'll get lower and lower down to like, you know, 50, 40, 30% coverage. So this is still something exciting to see with either your eclipse glasses or your uh, pinhole projectors. Um, but it isn't something that where the sky will get really, really, really significantly dark. Um, and it's not something you'll be able to, you know, see the corona uh, come out when you get totality. But it's still exciting and still rare. Yeah, and, and can you just tell me about how big the moon shadow is? So, like, in the sense that it's able to actually, you know, block out the sun, even though the sun is so much bigger than the moon. That's because of the proximity of the moon to Earth, correct? Yeah, so Earth, we're actually really, really special compared to other planets in terms of the apparent size of our moon versus the apparent size of our sun. Obviously, the sun, much, much bigger than the moon, but it just so happens that the moon, in terms of its size and distance and the sun's size and distance, they basically are the same size uh, inside our sky. So this ends up being, for this eclipse, the um, path of totality, that shadow of the moon, uh, across is about 185 kilometers. Hey, Veronica, great conversation. Thanks for taking the time to uh, let us tap into your expertise on this one. Yeah, thank you for having me. Veronica Dornan, my guest, she's joining us from Hamilton with the Department of Physics and Astronomy at McMaster University.